Dennis Murphy, uh, class of 57. Uh, grew up uh, in Firestone Park and went to St. Paul's grade school along with about eight other of my classmates, males of course at that time. Uh, we came up to Hoban in its first year. Uh, classes uh, were held at St. Bernard's in downtown Akron. My name is Marty Congle, class of 57. And uh, you know, I was born at the former Yugoslavia, came to the States here in 1952. And at that time, uh, there was a priest, but my senior Wolf was a pastor at St. Bernard's. And he spoke German, so we gravitated to that place because I speak German. And I went from I guess what, let's see, the sixth grade through the eighth grade in a year and a half. And uh, when Brother Noel, when they started the school, Brother Noel was there one day. And he asked me where I was going to go to school. I said, I was, I'm going to go to St. V's, St. Vincent. He said, well, we got this Hoban starting, Hoban High School. He said, it's an all boys school. I said, I'll go there. And that's how I wound up. school started in the fall of 53, but the building started somewhere after that. So the school wasn't built, and they had to find a place to put us for the first year. We had about 80 to 85 students. We had a little office, uh, a couple classrooms at St. Bernard's. We used the church auditorium underneath the church, um, and it was a very unique experience, obviously, because uh, we were in downtown Akron, there was a lot of things going on, the University of Akron was there, the bus station was right across the street from our school, the train station was just across the bridge. Uh, we had, uh, you know, an experience that, you know, like no other, I mean, we went to the Y for gym classes, we borrowed football stadiums. We went all the way to Cosby uh, grade school for basketball. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That was about, what, a good mile up there by St. V's. From we had, St. Bernard's all the way to St. Vincent High School there. We had no facilities of our own. Yeah. And in the meantime, the school was being built. And this also created a, an interesting situation when we finally came up here in, uh, in the fall of uh, 1954. But uh, I'm sure you can add a lot of stories to that. And we could be sitting here all afternoon talking about well, things. About yeah, that. yeah, that's for sure. We sure could because it was different from any anything that any other freshman could possibly have going to high school <laughs> because it was different. I mean, we were we had the first to eighth grade St. Bernard's kids there, and then we were freshman high school. And then there was only one playground there, and there's kids outside all the time playing recess and everything. And we're trying, <laughs> it was different, let me put it that way. <laughs> I, I kind of think because we had to walk everywhere. We didn't have a bus or anything. So we're, when we walked, we walked through, at that time, Polskis or anything else, and you find a, a, a custard stand, you get some custard in the meantime and walk wherever you had to go, all the way up to St. V's up there sometime, for, like I said, for a basketball thing, because that's the only gym we could go to, Cosby grade school. And uh, so, and I think it built a lot of camaraderie between the kids that had to go trans back and forth, you know, and uh, of course at that time nobody had cars like they have now, so everything was with a bus. Everything was bus connected. Yeah. Well, most families in those days, uh, there were a lot of one-car garages uh, in, in the communities out in the park here and in South Akron, Coga Falls, North Hill, for a good reason. People only had one car. Mom stayed home and took care of the family. She didn't need the car. Many of them didn't even know how to drive. My mother didn't know how to drive. Um, so a lot of kids came in carpools. Kids from Cuyahoga Falls, one guy might bring five or six kids on his way to Goodyear to work or that type of thing. And we took the buses. And don't forget hitchhiking. Oh, hitchhiking was big we, in those days. I used to take my niece with me and put her right in front of me and hitchhike. They'd pick five minutes I was picked up to, to go. But the other thing that I would like to mention my case anyway. It wouldn't uh, I was just 
a year and what three, four months here in the States. And my English was not too good at that time. But all, all, every, all of everybody, every student, I mean, they, they never excluded me from anything. None of the guys. They always said, Marty, come on with us, come with us. You can come with us. I said, well, I don't have any money. Ah, come on, we'll, we'll get you. Come on, come with us. And uh, yeah, I was treated exceptionally well, let me put it that way. Didn't keep us from picking on him, though. Oh, well, that goes with it. That's, if you don't pick on somebody, you don't like them. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I think I remember a time or two, um, I don't know, I think there was an unwritten rule in college when a professor wasn't there within a certain number of minutes. If he was a PhD, you had to wait X number of minutes. If he was just a regular professor, Y number of minutes. And we kind of had that rule with the brothers. If they had car trouble or didn't show up within 15 minutes of the start of school, we would exit. I mean, in all four directions, you'd see us running like the devil, uh, you know. Well, we had this, we took uh, final exams, I remember down in a, a big room up the right, uh, the right hand side of the building. <laughs> there was about 50 or 40 of us in there. And Mr. Maligio was the teacher, I forgot what subject it was, but he walked outside. <laughs> And half of the kids went to the desk and got the uh, the answers off of his. <laughs> All of us had a hundred percent. Of course, we had to do it over again. <laughs> well, there was a, an old stone mansion oh, yeah, right across just it. on the other side of where the freeway is now. Uh, it was actually owned by the Sumner family. Sumner Butters, you know, Tasty Perfudes, Pure Foods. Um, and and that's, that was their residence. Um, um, they had one car, uh, an old Dodge station wagon. And um, that's, you know, they, they came from up here down to St. Bernard's. And uh, with the three of them there, uh, that was the beginning core of brothers. Now, obviously, in our second year, a considerable number came on. I mean, at one point in time, I think before we were seniors, there must have been 30, 35 brothers here. We came up here. The school still wasn't completely built. And the expressway wasn't, you know, wasn't going yet. They still had to dynamite all that stuff through here. Was it the first year or second year that they dynamite? It was the first year. The first year. year they were. Um, the expressway was under construction in '54, as yeah. was this building. I, I I look back on it, and with the jurisprudence society we live in today, I'm sure the brothers would not have gotten away with opening the school, having us in here with the scaffolding in the halls, the wires hanging down. Pipe fitters walking through, plumbers, electricians, carpenters, uh, you know, you name it, it was still under construction. Yeah. I mean, a every student should have been wearing a hard hat. Oh, know, yeah, in absolutely. this day and age, we would have, you know. The, in the gym, uh, the gym wasn't, I mean, the building was there, I mean, it was closed in, but there was no floor, no bleachers. The students, with brother and all, we put it all in. The bleachers. The bleachers, yeah. yeah. The floor was done by bleachers. professionals, yeah. Yeah. But the bleachers, we put those in. The ones that you just took out about two years ago, yeah. the wooden ones, those, those were installed by, you know, the freshmen and sophomores back in 1954. Because every year they added a new class. That's why we were the first graduating class. We started as freshmen, and then the following year they had freshmen, sophomores, and then added juniors. And we were always the upperclassmen. We never had underclassmen. <laughs> we were never. Which was nice. <laughs> well, there was more than one window that cracked and more than, you know, a little bit of plaster that came down when they set off dynamite. If you look at the, at the walls of that, uh, of that uh, expressway there, uh, it's all solid rock and, uh, you know, it was no easy job of getting through there. They had to basically blast their way from the west end of it to the east end of it to get over toward Goodyear and to open that road up. But, uh, uh, you know, it, uh, it was kind of interesting that, uh, you know, we would 
have this 54 acres of property and that they would put the school up here. Of course, it was a high point, but the bulk of the property still lies on the other side of the uh, expressway right. and why they might not have just built school over there and done something else like put a stadium up here or whatever they had to know but I, I've never heard had this confirmed they had to know when they were planning to build the school when they bought the property that that freeway was going to come through sometime in the near future all those good were you in the woodshop classes no no see I was I was a I was a slow learner in grade school and, and they put me into Industrial arts. I couldn't speak college. English, and that was really <laughs> yeah. But you were still in pre-college. So, you know. We had kind of two tracks, and uh, uh, back over on the west side of this building, where you're getting ready to do an expansion and remodeling of uh, the uh, that side of the building, we had wood shop and we had metal shop, and we learned to weld, and uh, you know, a lot of shenanigans went on in places like that in terms of guys being guys and doing what we do and it, it was brother Goggles Thomas. were optional. Yeah. Now, <laughs> we had a we had a brother who was in the second wave a brother's name Thomas Dillman, brother Thomas Dillman, who uh, is still working as a brother in um, Ghana and is in, if he's not 90s, just about to step into his 90s and he's still active. Is, is that right? Yeah, but he was our shop teacher. He was also a math teacher and has since gone on to write books on teaching mathematics. And he's quite an interesting guy. Well, we had religion class every uh, day, one hour, one hour religion class, which you don't have anymore now, I don't think, anyway. Well, they do. They have some, yeah. But uh, uh, you had your math, what do they call math class every day? They had your history. You had a civics class, uh, English, English, yeah. Latin, La yeah, Latin. That's right. We had Latin. That's yeah. right. So those were the five basic classes that you had. Yeah, and yeah. then you know, for some of us, we had an extra class at the end of the day. Uh, for me, it was detention. <laughs> <laughs> we were out painting. Uh, Marty and I come up here and uh, help in the summertime, and we were out staining the pavilion and one of the brothers came by and looked up from the ladder and he says uh, uh, what are you doing and I said oh hi brother I said we're working off detentions from back in the 50s when we were here. <laughs> there's a lot of detentions given up oh yeah they were, they were abusive <laughs> because we had who was it that Hung Zavarella. Zavarella was about five foot two, weighed about 110 pounds. And they hung him out by his head down, held him by the legs, and held him out the window. <laughs> down in front of a window where another teacher was teaching. <laughs> they did it right by the teacher's desk where so he would see it. <laughs> yeah. Things were a little different than they are now. <laughs> Well, I, I, like I said, I played football for a couple of years and then I got my knee hurt and that was the end of me. Uh, I ran track for a little bit, we had that. Uh, they had a basketball team, they had a baseball team. Uh, see, they didn't have, too bad they didn't have a soccer team because uh, I was, just when I started to get pretty good over in Europe in soccer, we came over here and there was no soccer at that time here. So. But yeah, I played football. I had a good time. I was half decent. Uh, basketball, I was not that particular. But I was pretty fast, so I was pretty good in track. Um, that, those are the only sports that they actually had, really had. Yeah. I started out playing some With football. Golf, yeah. golf, and uh, I found out that I didn't like getting hurt or hurting other people. And so I think I became manager and maybe ultimately a cheerleader. <laughs> I didn't have cheerleaders. They had to be males since we were an all-male school. I played basketball. Played a year, dropped out a year, and then my junior and senior year I lettered. But mostly sitting on the bench. I, uh, I think it was a gift from Mr. Boldacci to, uh, to get my letter. Um, and then I played golf for three years. Uh, we, we had a pretty good golf team up here. And, um, 
But we also had other activities. I, uh, I sang in the choir. I did too. I played in the band. I sang played in the band. Yeah, we had a band. Yeah. Um, I was in the first uh, theater production that we had here at Hoban. Um, it was, I think, typecasting. We, had, we did Charlie's Angel and I played the angel. Um, but uh, I, I, was, I was in about two plays in high school and wish I'd have done something with it beyond that because uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. I just really enjoyed the theater. And, uh, but we had, the brothers did a lot with the situation that we had to give us a rounded experience. We had a, we, we started the first musical. Oh. We did the first canned food drive. We did, sold the candy bars, which uh, America's finest chocolate, that went on for many, many years here before you got things going like the uh, Oktoberfest and the uh, extravaganza. So those are things that preceded all that that we did back in the, in the 50s and, and on into the 60s. Yeah, those musicals, they were pretty big productions and we had it for, what, two or three days and the gym was full. We filled up, I mean, the, the people came because we had, we borrowed girls from the Elms a lot of times to help us out. But the band and the choir in the background and, and no, it, it was pretty good production. Yeah, with the number of brothers you had, you were, you, you just had religion right in your face all the yeah. time, you know, and they wore cassocks in their day. I mean, it was the white collars and cassocks and the cross and, and uh, you know, you were confronted with religion, you know, all the time while you were here at school. But we also had a full-time priest here. Yeah. We had a priest named Father Borman, who was our, uh, was our school chaplain, and he was here for three, maybe two of the years after the school really got going. Um, so he would say Mass, and then sometimes other priests from other parishes would come in and, you know, do Masses. There was daily Masses here. There was daily mass Masses set here, right here at the school. And, oh, it, it was... No, they stressed, they stressed it, stressed religion quite a bit. Like I said, we had religion class every, uh, was it once a, a week or every day? I can't remember. I, I, I don't remember either, but there's a priest that came from uh, St. Paul a lot of times and held religion class. Yep. Um, the, uh, the tuition in our day was, you know, it was laughable. Uh, I caddied, mowed lawns, and shoveled snow, and Marty did stuff to make money. But our tuition was 150 bucks a year. And when you look back at that and you look forward to you know, what it is now, and, and actually the tuition doesn't even cover the cost of, uh, of what the education costs. It has to be supplemented by uh, contributions and you know, alumni, fundraisers. endowments, and fundraisers. Uh, um, you know, it's, it's just remarkable how much it's changed. We were basically at that time and still remain an urban, middle-class, blue-collar school. Now, especially in those days, there was a lot of blue-collar jobs in this town with four rubber companies here and all that. Uh, that's changed a bit, but, you know, I still think we're kind of a, that middle-class urban school, which, you know, makes us a bit unique. And I think that's special, and I think we need to always preserve that. Well, you cut grass and stuff to make money to pay for your tuition. I worked here at the school after school, mopping floors and things. You still have it going on right now, students working here. I got paid 60 cents an hour. 40 cents went to the tuition, and 20 cents went to my, to me, <laughs> spending money. And that's paid for my tuition, yeah. I had been an altar boy at St. Paul's, and I'd seen him there uh, for confirmations, perhaps, or uh, he was here for certainly the dedication of the building, and said some masses here. Um, I was very taken with uh, Bishop Lennon's offer to uh, make Hoban the residence uh, of Bishop Hoban's chalice which was a neat thing to be at that first Mass and to see 
that uh, present and that the fact that it's you know staying here. Um, but uh, he was he was he was a figure that was larger than life. He was he was very liked and very revered and, and did a lot uh, uh, in this diocese. Of course, he started previous to this. He started uh, St. Edward's in uh, the mid to late 40s. Called Notre Dame and said he wanted to start a school and he wanted the brothers to take it. And then six, seven years later, he did it again for a school here in Akron. And he already had a Holy Cross school up in um, Gates Mills, which was Gilmore Academy. But this didn't happen by accident because Bishop Hoban graduated from a Holy Cross school in Chicago in the uh, early 1900s, uh, Trinity High School. So. Uh, knew the brothers, and were taught by the brothers, and, you know, that's part of what, you know, the legacy, you know, of him and of this school and St. Ed's uh, was all about. He had quite a sense of humor because I remember at the dedication of the school when he was saying his homily, he was thought, I was kind of, and I had some doubts about naming the school after me because at football games, you know, he holler, you know, go kill him, go kill him, open them. You know? <laughs> Which we didn't do for a while. Which, yeah, that's right. well, we never had a losing season, though. We never had a losing season. <laughs>
hopefully we were some good influence in whatever happened, even though the things we did were not that <laughs> impressive. They've, they've improved on much. So yeah. <laughs>